Hi, uh, it's me, Grace, and I'm sorry this video is two weeks late. Basically what happened is I got the flu two weeks ago, and then my flu turned into pneumonia. Um, so then that lasted for another week, um, and yeah, I've basically been, like, really, really ill, and I missed two weeks of school, but here I am now. So, um, for this week's video, I'm doing, I'm just painting a watercolor girl, pretty simple, but I'm actually kind of not exactly following the kind of following this tutorial that I watched. It is a uh, Sarah Turpies, How I Paint Skin with Watercolors, um, and it's this really cool tutorial, um, for basically painting skin with watercolors, because even though, like, I obviously do things my own way, um, it's really interesting to see how she does things. Like, for example, if she'll put down a color, like the blush color I just put down, I just wait for it to spread out and dry. She takes a dry brush and blends it, which I'm, I'm going to do right now. So putting down the color, and then I take my dry brush, and I blend it. And this had never occurred to me. I mean, I sound like the biggest idiot in the world right now, but, like, literally, I had never thought of doing this before. This blew my mind. Like, I watched this video, and I felt like the person from, like, Persia or the Middle East that discovered algebra and variables. Like, like what? Incredible. Amazing. I thank you, Sarah, for teaching me this, because, like, what? So, um, I'm kind of using her techniques a little bit for this. Uh, not totally. Like, I kind of try to blend it into my own style. But I definitely, like, put down the wet stuff and then blended it with a dry brush sometimes, because, like, what? Amazing. Um, so yeah, I just laid down some, like, base values for the skin. Another part of the things that she does is she gets, like, she puts down water on all of the skin first, uh, which is cool. Good for you, Sarah, but, uh, it takes a while to dry, so I started working on the background while I was waiting for the skin to dry. Originally, I had this vision of, like, a light blue background, and then I was gonna paint some ferns in the back, but when I put down, like, the really dark blue, um, I realized that you probably wouldn't be able to see the ferns, but I liked the texture of, like, the blue spreading onto my paper. So I just decided to scrap the ferns for another day um, and just focus on the blue as the background. Uh, so for the lips, I struggled with them a lot because I kept on making them too big. Um, so I kept on making the top lip too big. But my basic vision was I wanted a really cute pair of, like, Lips with like orange ombre lipstick, kind of like the Korean uh, like ombre lips. And I also wanted orange eyeshadow. Um, but as you can tell, the orange eyeshadow is not going fantastic. So I kind of just blended it out into the entire eye area, which is fine because like um, I wanted to give her a partial monolid, which is the eyelid I have. And this kind of shading sets that up really well anyways. Um, so I took kind of like a desaturated eggplant color um, and used it to add some shadows to the face because I'm trying to not use just warm browns as shadows, you know, to keep things lively and interesting. I also added a shadow on the um, part of the face that's facing away from the light and I tried to add some more definition to the nose. Also gave her some pop and cheekbones with Sarah's uh, put wet color down and blend with the dry brush method. Uh, really great. Awesome. Sarah, thank you for showing me the light. I really do feel, like, educated now. Um, added some more shading overall to the face to try to keep it dimensional. With watercolor, it can be intimidating to add too much shadow because there's this feeling that you're not really gonna be able to take it away. But if you add in light layers, like, you can't really mess up too badly. Even if you feel like you go too dark, you can just make the entire skin tone. Like, you can make all the skin one shade darker, too, and then the contrast will be less harsh. Um, so then I started lining the eyes with a dark brown mixed with green a little bit, so it's not too warm. And I started on the eyebrows, but the skin wasn't actually dry yet, so it started, like, blurring everywhere so I blotted it up with a piece of paper you really should be using paper towels I'm just lazy so like I used a piece of paper because I didn't want to get up um but that's also another nice thing about watercolor is that like if you mess up you can just blot it off or you can also just take a wet brush with that just has water on it and like sort of massage the area 
that you made the air and then blot it and it'll lift. Um, but that kind of also only applies if you're using really uh, heavyweight watercolor paper. Um, so not to get like too off topic, but watercolor paper has different weights um, and different thicknesses. I don't know like a ton about the different weights, but the heavier and like more textured and thicker your watercolor paper is, the more uh, water you can put on it without it warping or uh, pilling or bending. If you have a lighter watercolor paper, then you actually are supposed to prep it. Um, so when you put water on it later, it doesn't warp and bend. And if you like try and lift your mistakes by putting water on it, um, it'll just, the, wa the paper will pill uh, and it won't look that good. So like for example, the line on the forehead, I think I decided was too harsh the shadow lines, so all I had to do was go and get a wet uh, paintbrush and I just massage the line, well not now, when did I do that? Maybe a little later. I just massaged the forehead line and like it just blended it out instantly. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you can tell but the paper I'm using right now is like, it's very heavy. Um, so, oh yeah, so uh, I also colored the whites of the, oh yeah, here, I'm doing it right here. I just faded the watercolor line. Um, the water, sorry, the forehead line. Um, so now I'm just sort of filling in the eyes. I used a brown mixture. Um, I didn't want to make them too dark initially, but later I like do go in and make them darker. I also added nostrils so she can <laughs> breathe for real. And I tried to add color to the inside of the mouth, and that was bad, so I, I undid that pretty quick. Um, I gave her some kind of, like, puppy eyeliner, too, um, and an epicanthic fold on her inner corner. Um, and I added some shading to the outside of the nose, very delicately. Don't want to go too heavy in that area. Um, and when I was shading in the ear, I also kind of decided to give her a piercing, a cartilage piercing and an earring, a lobe piercing. Um, so it's about now that I was trying to start fixing the shoulders because they look kind of messed up, but I didn't realize that the problem was that the shorter shoulder on the um, on the I guess it would be the right hand side of the screen um, was actually too short, and I made it shorter, so that didn't really fix things. Uh, so now I'm adding, I'm doing the hair. I added some dark brown for the roots. Um, I briefly thought about making her hair be brown, but then I decided that if you can like make any color hair, uh, because this is painting and it's not the real world and you don't have to bleach your hair to get it fun colors, why wouldn't you just make it any color? Like, nothing against brown hair. I have brown hair right now, but like, just... Let me live my life vicariously through the, my artwork um, because my artwork doesn't have to endure dry hair and split ends from bleaching, which is what I have to endure when I want fun colored hair. Um, so I'm thickening the eyeliner, adding a little bit under the eyes, sort of relining the mouth area, um, and finally getting that top lip right. Oh, that was so satisfying to finally do correctly. Um, I added some sort of like pixel looking blocks to the background, you know, just to keep it fun and interesting. Um, I added a little more definition to the eyes and the eyebrows and then for the hair, I kind of got a little lazy. I didn't want to fully shade all the hair. Um, so I just kind of defined the strands with the same shade of green I used to do all of it, but instead of washing it out, it was more concentrated, so it was a little darker. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it for the hair. Yeah, it was really simple. Um, and then I went in and decided to fix the shoulders with a colored pencil. I'm just sort of sketching out what the shoulders should look like. Because the blue in the background wasn't completely dry and I didn't want to mess up my background with black bleeding into it, I went back to the face and I just refined the eyebrows a little bit, uh, went over the nose, 
at its very careful shading to the left nostril, like a little bit of shading under the lip, a little more definition to the inner corners, and then I went and filled in the shirt. Um, so just a tip, if your shoulders on your character are too narrow and you're working with watercolor, adding a dark colored shirt will pretty much fix it because it'll just go over whatever your background was and the skin. Um, then I finally got that upper lip right, which was very satisfying. I made her roots a little bit darker, uh, just to be a little more realistic. Um, and that, because her eyebrows are so dark, so it's basically just the same color as the eyebrows. And then I gave her a hair shadow, but the hair shadow was really dark, like, much darker than the hair. And it looked very strange, so I blotted that off. And that was pretty much it. The brush that I used... For her nose, I also used to do my makeup, so like there was glitter on it, so now her nose has glitter on it, but like, happy little accidents, right? Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, sorry it was so late, I hope you have a nice day, or night, or afternoon.